tub. Nigiri sushi, Ounce. truffles, oysters, all of them have enjoyed similar makeovers over the years. Of course, you know me, your boys, you know, little bougie. I eat caviar once every lifetime. So basically, I haven't had it yet. Next life, I'll have it though. What? That makes no sense. <laughs> Food theory. Oh my fucking god. Cheetahs are cow food. Or I mean, like, I knew there was a reason I liked them. Wait a minute. Yeah, apparently the cow food, you know, and my probably gonna brain, like brain focus into believing they are. Um, I mean, he has his own little theory about why they're cow foods, but we won't know why they're cow foods unless we watch the video. So pff, let's just get into it. Right. Got a banana. I don't know why I have a banana here. Whoa, this is kind of like it's kind of like the pee. Whoa. Okay, okay. I'll just get into the video. Right. Three, two, one. Let's get it. Here's your feel-good story for the day, theorists. In 1978, right. Richard Montanez began working as a janitor at Frito-Lay. One day, a yeah. machine in the plant malfunctioned and stopped oh, adding yeah. cheese dust to the Cheetos. Fun fact, by the way, the company's official term for Cheetos dust is Cheetle. But I digress. <laughs> Since the Cheetle-less nice. batch of corn puffs couldn't be sold to consumers, Montanez <sighs> took some of the unseasoned Cheetos home with him and flavored them with spices reminiscent of Mexican street corn. His spicy, hot Cheetos were a hit with family and friends, and so Montanez pitched the idea to the CEO of Frito-Lay's parent company, PepsiCo. Today, you probably know Montanez's creation as Flamin' Hot Cheetos, Ooh. a product that has generated over a billion dollars in revenue for the company since hitting shelves in the early 90s. And as for Montanez, a janitor he's, who is a- He's making money now, isn't he? Out, he's now a vice president at PepsiCo. Down. Don't get your hopes up. Doesn't mean you're gonna get like, something, but you could. <laughs> I'm so depressing. I mean, you could. I, I'm not saying you can't, but it's very unlikely. Damn. Hello, internet. Hey. Welcome, Welcome to Food, to food Theory. theory. If you're uh. hungry to learn, go ahead. Snack on that subscription button. What can I say, theorists? Cheetos are just one of those foods. Ch subscription button doesn't taste that nice. There trust is me. No way that I'm stopping until I reach. Unless you want to watch the video, I mean, then it's amazing. But you know, it won't taste nice. Everything I love rolled into one lumpy, lightweight snack. They're fried. They have salt. They have cheese. Plus, mm, electroencephalogram results show that getting Cheeto on your fingers provides quote a sense of giddy subversion that consumers enjoy over the messiness of the product. So really, how am I True. not supposed That's to the be best part. To these things? The folks over Chill. at Frito-Lay have clearly gay. done their research. The Cheeto is a perfect, meticulously engineered snack food. Or so it would seem. Until you find out that they were a complete mm. accident. You see, theorists, I recently went down a bit of a Cheetos rabbit hole when I started researching the origin story of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Apparently a biopic on Richard Montanez's life is in the works with Fox Searchlight, so initially I thought it might be a good topic for the Film Theory channel. But as I dug deeper mm. into the history of Cheetos, I came to realize that the story of a janitor inventing Flamin' Hot Cheetos, as fascinating as it might be, was actually yeah. the second most intriguing story about the history of Cheetos. Because what really What's blew my though? mind was the story of the how Catholic corn one. puffs themselves were invented, or should I say, rebranded. Folks, we were oh. never meant to eat cheese puffs. No human was. Hats off to you, Cheetos. Game recognized game. You almost distracted mm. me with your PR-friendly feel-good story about the janitor, but I've passed all that now. My eyes are Facts. open. Here's the real story here, theorists. The one that the Big story. Snack Food doesn't want you to know about. Cheese puffs are repurposed cow food. No clickbait here, friends. Cheese puffs are a straight-up byproduct of livestock feed manufacturing. And let's just think that leveling up from livestock feed to human food would be enough for the audacious cheese puff. Think again. At this very moment, even as we speak, your favorite crunchy cheese snack is quietly rebranding itself yet again. And this time, it's not aiming for the moon. It's aiming for the What's dang for? stars. Let's jump <laughs> right in, friends, because today's food theory is utterly outrageous. The cheese puff origin Christ story Jesus. begins in the early 1930s in Beloit, Wisconsin, where a man by the name of Claire Matthews came up with an idea for a feed grinder. This fit. machine was capable of breaking corn and other popular livestock feeds into smaller flakes, which was handy because the smaller-sized flakes were easier for animals to mm. ingest. Matthews got a handful of business partners together, and in 1933, they founded the Flackall Corporation, a Beloit-based company dedicated to producing flakes livestock feed with its patented okay. feed grinder. But what they didn't yet realize is that they had also invented the world's first corn puff snack extruder. See, two things would happen whenever their feed grinder was run for an extended period of time. One, the machine would get hot. Okay. Two, it would clog. In order to prevent clogging, That's every so often the machine operator <sighs> would pour moistened corn kernels through the feed grinder in order to flush it out a bit. Now, if the moistened corn happened to get fed through when the machine was really hot, the corn would come out on the other end in long puffs. 
puffy ribbons, almost like <laughs> lumpy, bumpy strings of popcorn. This clip from the BBC mm. actually does a great job of succinctly explaining how a corn puff snap Damn, extruder like... actually works. The raw Silks. maze goes inside, and a tightly fitting spiral compacts it. Okay. As the spiral turns, it forces the maze down towards the end. And the force gets harder and harder and creates heat and so much That's heat she said. that when the maze finally gets squeezed out of this tiny little hole here, it's so hot that it cooks it and you get corn puffs. Now, the Flacall Corporation didn't Down. give much thought to these puffy ribbons. They're like, you know, just <laughs> decimal, just you know, people all the right and say, I'm not mad. history has taught us anything, it's that anytime something new comes along, someone's gonna put it in their mouth. In this Facts. case, that Cyanide, was yum. Edward Wilson, a Ooh. machine operator with the Chlorine? Flacall Corporation. Yummy. The puffy corn ribbons piqued his curiosity, so he took them home after work one day, deep fried them, then seasoned them with some good old Wisconsin cheddar cheese and salt. Wilson's so-called corn curls were such a hit that the Flacall Corporation made some tweaks to their feed grinder design and patented a brand new machine to pump. Oh shit. Are getting in on the Cheetos game. In 2017, Cheetos launched a pop up restaurant in New York City called the Spotted Cheetah. The menu, prepared by celebrity chef Ann Burrell, included dishes such as Cheetos meatballs, Cheetos I'll mix see. up crusted chicken milanese, and Cheetos Sweetos crusted cheesecake. That pop up Cheetos, restaurant Sweetos was such crust. a hit that Cheetos teamed Bruh. up with chef Roy Choi the following year in Los Angeles for another pop up called the Flamin' Hot Spot, which incorporated Flamin' Hot Cheetos into a variety of dishes. And just this year, Cheetos moved into the world of sushi, sushi. not as a temporary Ow. pop up either. He shows sushi that now offers crazy. the Cheetos flaming hot roll on their menu at locations across the US. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that I collabed with Rosanna Pancino on her cooking channel and tried a bunch of these Cheetos creations and I got to say, they're not bad. Heck, some of them would be even considered great provided, you know, they weren't take out and ordered hours before and sitting around because we were paid <laughs> to shoot the video. That video by the way is up in the upper right hand corner of the screen right now. Go watch it. Rosanna and I we're best buds. She's my sister from another mister. I love her so much. Bro, I've missed you so much this year. Let's do something when it becomes safe to do something together again, please. <laughs> now, obviously, the vast majority of people still I'm keep Cheetos making as a standalone little snack. Cool, uh, but the fact switch. is, Cheetos oh, are only it? becoming yeah, more switch, accepted right? as a cooking cream. ingredient Stuff's as time so, goes on. So nice, if you bro. think about it, Cheetos are really versatile as far as ingredients go. First, they come in a wide variety of flavors. So if your dish is mm. sweet, savory, Huffy spicy, you know, whatever, crunchy, there is a flaming. Cheeto for the job. Second, Cheetos can be easily ground into crumbs, meaning they can be infused into dishes the same way any Seasoning. powdered ingredient could be. Yep. And then there's the texture. Cheetos can add an unexpected crunch to any dish it's added to. And finally, it has a distinctive look. The Cheeto can be added to pretty much any dish as a garnish. Of course, the mere fact that Cheetos are useful as a cooking ingredient isn't enough. The real test is whether Cheetos can rebrand itself in the eyes of culinary society. No small task for a snack with a cartoon Cheetah as nah, its mascot, would never do that shit. such he a would... rebranding <laughs> Unless isn't maybe he was trying to or something. Plenty of other he Try that shit to climb life. the social ladder, as it were, shedding like, their low-class status and Get being out. accepted as fine dining Bugle. material. Lobsters and caviar, for instance, were once regarded as foods only fit for prisoners. Today, of course, lobster is often yeah, the spiciest item on the menu. So and even mid-level caviar can set you back seventy-five dollars for a single ounce. Tub. Nigiri sushi, ounce. truffles, oysters—all of them have enjoyed similar makeovers over the years. Of course, you know me, your boys, you know, low bougie. I eat caviar once every lifetime. So this I haven't had it yet. Next life I'll have it though. What? That makes no sense. Now, just because these foods achieved culinary acceptance doesn't mean that Cheetos necessarily will. After all, the foods Facts. I just listed all had it easier than corn puffs. They were considered food when they began their journey to the top. Corn puffs weren't even regarded as food fit They're for livestock. Cow food. They were literally oh. industrial waste products. But here's something to help encourage the Cheeto as it trudges onward and upward. A food has managed to accomplish the leap from absolute waste product what to food? top tier luxury item. Technically, it's a drink, but still. I'm talking about rum. See, in the 17th century, the molasses left over from sugar production in the Caribbean was hmm. regarded as an industrial waste product. It was often okay. just dumped into the ocean until someone figured out how to distill it down into liquor. And today, a top shelf rum will sell for hundreds of dollars per Fact bottle. Right. So take note, she will try anything, man. I swear to God. Radiation? To if we, if we infuse it and distill it, right? We can make a nice but little concoction. Will the Cheeto be able to pull it off? Will it actually be able to shed its ignoble? 
humble beginnings and pull off a Richard Montanez of its own? I'm sure not gonna bet against the corn puff on this one. I mean, it one. could. Not it went from waste to, you know, these recipes edible food for before, humans. But Cheetos has that the benefit nasty. of having Frito Lay disgusting. and PepsiCo on board, helping push their product into the world of fine dining with pop-up restaurants and chef collaborations. I mean, heck, if Tide Pods can make the leap from inedible laundry detergent into snack food for idiots, I see no reason why <laughs> Cheetos can't go from college well, to snack about? food to Tide Pods do be hitting, though. I ain't gonna lie. No what? reason why you shouldn't be able to digivolve yourself from absolute noob to master in whatever skill you choose using our sponsor for today's blonde. episode. I don't see a difference. An online learning community oh my God. with you think you're small with this little slick ass ad. Yeah, okay. Bro, At the end of the video. I, I think I'm pretty sure the rest is just an ad, but I didn't even hear the problem. Here is food theory and see. Well, or whatever. Which time we heard it, alright? Basically, I mean, she just could make it to the top. Right? I mean, it's you know, it's kind of like what. I don't even know what the pricing is here. <laughs> even in America, I'm not even sure. But it could happen. It could. I mean, if freaking caviar was used to be jail food, now it's freaking luxury food, I think it can happen. But if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll check out the original video, of course, and uh, peace.